Last night's wine binge, wine binge had been precipitated by a phone call from Amy. I'm sorry about your dog, Mom. Mrs. Spencer closed her eyes and reminded herself that Amy was going through something, too. Her partner, girlfriend, whatever, had just died. They'd been traveling in the West, the two of them, hopping between fruit farms or some such. Mrs. Spencer had never approved of the plan. She'd never approved of a lot of things. It was probably a filthy lifestyle for one, not adhering to even the most fundamental hygienic standards. What she knew from Amy was that they'd been hiking. The girl, careless probably, had fallen down an embankment, and that had been the end of it. And Mrs. Spencer was glad, down on her knees, beseechingly glad, that it hadn't been Amy. She drifted to the day she watched seven-year-old Amy chase a basketball in front of a two-ton pickup. The Lord had spared her that day, but he had other days in mind. There were days lying in wait to cast a shadow over all the ones that followed. I know, it's just terrible, she said to Amy, her voice perversely bright. There'd been a time when she confronted Amy about her duplicitous morals, about her imperiled soul. But nowadays, the tone Mrs. Spencer took with her younger daughter was all forced cheerfulness. It bubbled up from the depths of her being like so much wine-purpled vomit. I thought he must have dug a hole under the fence, she burbled. But then I saw the door into the garage was open. The knob was tied to that little hook. You know, the one your father rigged? But the weird thing is, I never used that hook. Amy, nobody uses that door anymore. Amy was silent for a moment. Yeah, that's pretty weird, she finally said. So tell me something, Mrs. Spencer said. Conversational lags were like potholes, best avoided. I just got into an argument about this with someone. Oscar was the blue muppet on Sesame Street, right? The one with the noodle arms and pink nose? That was Grover. No, Grover was the green one that lived in the trash can. Grover the Grouch. Oscar was the Grouch. Oscar the Grouch. But Grover the Grouch has the alliteration. Mom, I'm about 100% sure on this. Well, shoot. Mrs. Spencer heaved a mournful sigh. That means I gave Oscar the wrong name. I never would have named him after a Grouch. A pause from Amy and then, well, I don't know what to tell you. Neither of her daughters had excess stores of kindness for their mother. They were both selfish, pursuing their pleasures in a finite world. So, how are things going? Courtesy compelled a mother to ask. Just fine and dandy. <sighs> Mrs. Spencer truly hated that her daughter was in pain. But at the same time, Amy had always held herself above the simple physical facts of the world, its statistics of harm and its danger of death. Now she would know. Two young women out in the world like that. Of course something bad was going to happen. Her own husband's heart had attacked him on a ladder as he cleared gunk from the gutters, and he was dead before he hit the ground. That was the world. That was life. Well, so what are you doing? Mrs. Spencer murmured into the receiver. You're staying with a friend? She was glad Amy hadn't opted to stay with Monica out there on the coast. She would not have to imagine the two of them sitting in some dim bar. Monica stirring a vodka tonic while Amy knocked back a beer. Sisters wading through a cesspool of combined maternal grievance. Yeah, my friend Carlos, Amy said. He works a lot, so I mostly have the place to myself. Are you looking for work? Mrs. Spencer asked hopefully. There was a familiar muffled slurp. No, Mom, I'm not looking for work right this particular second. That's fine, that's fine. She may have thought about trying to stop herself before plunging onward. It's just that I get so uncomfortable when you don't have insurance. I'm only worried about your safety, she insisted. What if it had been, just drop it, Mom, okay? I don't really feel like talking to you about this. Mrs. Spencer was standing in the kitchen, bathed in darkness, but her cheerful lilt would not be deterred. You know I just want the best for you, right? She said. You know I love you? Yes, Amy snapped. Then she sighed, a gush of air that rasped over the receiver like wind in a shell. Yes, I know you love me. Her words were uncharacteristically slow and measured, and the longer she let them hang there, the more plaintively sarcastic they became. Actually, she added, but then stopped. Mrs. Spencer perked up. Yes, what is it? After a silence laden with struggle, Amy said, I've been meaning to go through our storage unit. It's right down the street from here, but I just haven't been able to yet. I thought maybe you could come out here for a couple of days and help me. 
Mrs. Spencer was at the drain board refilling her glass. She knocked it too hard with the bottle then, and it shattered. So fucking fragile, she thought. Why are wine glasses so fucking fragile? Amy had not appealed directly for her mother's help since she was a child. If she'd heard the glass, she didn't say anything. Oh, honey, I don't know. It would be so hard to get a sub, and... She was about to cite Oscar as an obstacle before remembering this excuse did not exist anymore. It's just a bad time. Red wine dripped from the white counter to the floor. A curious roach poked his head from the crevice between the counter and stove. Yeah, Amy finally said. Okay, I get it. She cleared her throat. I gotta go do some stuff now. You know I love you, sweetie, right? You know that? But the line was dead, and there was blood dripping from her palm. Thanks.